Welcome to a Wiser Retirement Podcast. Before we get started with the episode, I want to tell you about a new ebook available on our website called Buyer Beware. Why do they keep trying to sell you that annuity? This ebook covers the various types of annuities, negatives to owning annuities, and better investment alternatives to annuities. To download this ebook, you can click the link in the episode notes or go to wiserinvestor.com and you'll find it at the bottom of the page. Now on to today's episode. Welcome to the Wise Retirement Podcast, where we believe the best financial advice should always be conflict-free. I'm your host, Casey Smith. Guiding you to financial freedom today is my co-host, Michaela Laney. Hey, Michaela. Good morning. So Michaela is a uh, planning associate with associate with us here at Wiser Wealth Management, and you, this is probably, what, your fourth time on the pod? Probably. Maybe? Somewhere yeah, in there? Maybe. Uh, today, we're going to talk about having a million-dollar morning routine. But before we get into that, <laughs> uh, let's talk about this relaunch of uh, Bard. Have you tried this yet? Well, I have typed in a few things into it, but you were just telling me a really great like synopsis of what you put into it. And it actually gave you a whole chart. Yeah, and I mean, I, so we've talked a little bit on the podcast about uh, chat GPT um, with Brad, who, I mean... <laughs> <laughs> Brad's slow to learn new technology. Um, so that that was a lot for him. But Bard is basically your chat GBT alternate, I guess. Um, it's a little more focused on um, web search. It's more connected with web search where chat GBT 3.5, I think, was only good to a couple of years ago. Yes, yes. Uh, 4.0, I think, is more connected to search or you can integrate it into your... I have it, uh, chat GBT integrated into my Google browser um, so, but it's a little clunky, clunky a little slow. I noticed. Yeah. Um, so Bard, you, anybody with a Gmail account can log in to bard.google.com. Um, you log in, click some disclosures or whatever, and then there it is. You can, it, you can type questions. So yesterday we got into a rather in-depth conversation internally about does the, has the S and P 500, how, how long has the S and P 500 been outperforming? foreign developed uh, markets, X U S right. So yes. foreign, mm-hmm. right. International. Um, and so I, I thought about that uh, last night. So pulled out Bard on my iPhone and typed it in and it sent me within a few seconds, um, the last 20 years of performance history of the S and P 500 versus the MSCI uh, foreign uh, developed index X U S. It's incredible what technology can do. And by the way, the S and P 500 has underperformed 11 times of the last 20 years uh, compared to the foreign index. So what's what's interesting is the last five years has pretty much been the S and P 500. But prior to that, it was kind of when each one got its blow <laughs> no, <laughs> year, year by year. Um, and a lot of it has to do with currency, what's happening in world currencies. But uh, I don't know. Maybe it's a good time to be considering. Um, foreign investments. I mean, right now there's definitely outperforming U S both are up year to date, but, uh, foreign's up a little bit more. So anyway, that's, uh, that's, that's Brad's territory. So (laughs) when he arrives today, I plan on saying, Hey Brad, I have a new tool for you to use and in your, to start your search, you know, you don't want to look at that and necessarily make investment decisions on it, but you definitely would want to, um, say, okay, well I know this. So now I'm going to take my research that much further. Right. Yes, it's a great um, basis point to start at. Uh, you, know, you, you know, we had to write a white paper for Hadley here uh, last week, and I used it to uh, basically get an outline of what I what I might need for this white paper. Yeah, and definitely. I was able to add some to it, but quite honestly, if it's how you search, it's it's you know, I was writing something for um, small business owners, and so I said I want to write and white paper on why small business owners should be using a financial advisor from the perspective of a fiduciary fee only advisor. And it came up with uh, about a thousand word essay for me. It's insane how Isn't specific you can get with it. And, and, and it actually does it and like if you from don't, a specific right. perspective. And if you don't like mm-hmm. it, then you can say, I want you to regenerate this and try again. And it'll keep trying again. Uh, to to meet your expectations, but you have to give it the parameters, and you know, of course, my kids at at home they're they're, they're like, who's won the most World Series games? I'm like, guys, 
you could do that in a simple Google search. It's like, yeah. you know, who has hit the most home runs yeah. in their career, but only during a World Series, right? Exactly. So that, you know. It's you, more fine-tuned data. Yeah, you get, you, it'll, it'll, it'll pull that. It'll pull that data for you. It kind of wonder makes you wonder. You know, you watch a, a any sporting event, and they're like, you know, he's sixty percent from the free throw line for the last ten years of his career. <laughs> it's like, how do you know this stuff? So well, now they can search it on demand, right? It, well, I'm sure they do already. Um, yeah. I'm sure they had this for a long time there. But anyway, um, if you're interested in in, in following us on that uh, bard.google.com or you can go to OpenAI, which is ChatGPT, which is kind of like the Microsoft version. So we kind of have ChatGPT versus Bard now. Yes. Um, now Bard, I, you know, I, th I think it, uh, the reviews that I've seen, have, it hasn't always been just spot on accurate. But mm -hmm. um, a lot of people believe that Google's been holding back, like the full release of Bard, uh, just because sense. it's so powerful that they're waiting on regulation. That makes sense. Because, right, I mean, right now, Kamala Harris is going to be our AI czar, which <laughs> I try to keep <laughs> politics out of this show, but you're kind of like, really? That's the person that's going to be in charge of our yeah. AI policy? Like, I don't know about that. Um, so, yeah. <laughs> so, but, you know, for Google, it, that, that's a, kind of a big risk. It's You throw it out there, and then you run the risk of the government going, this is terrible and we're penalizing you for this. Um, Definitely. Like what's happening in crypto, mm -hmm. right? They approve things or don't approve things. And then now they're just going after everybody, even people they said yes to prior, uh, yes. which is I'm sure frustrating. Um, but anyway, uh, you know, this stuff's very powerful and it's going to be, it's going to be very interesting. I mean, even our own industry, you talked mm -hmm. about the kids, these article yesterday, Yes. AI is supposed to be our friend. Stop being <laughs> scared is. of it. Exactly. It's not supposed to be, you know, taking away jobs. It's really supposed to be something that helps you be more efficient in the workplace. So taking away financial advisors jobs because people in the yes. tech space have already been replaced by AI. If you're a exactly. low level coder, we mm -hmm. don't need you anymore. That's very true. Um, yes. Which has been very interesting to watch. This but, is the beginning of the next wave of productivity. Mm -hmm. Like quite honestly, this is probably how we save our economy. No, definitely. Well, and it's just, it's one of those things where I think for financial advisors, and this is what kind of Kitsies was saying in his article, was that you're never really going to lose the financial advisor aspect because people want a person-to-person -person connection. And it's like people don't trust self-driving cars because of the trust aspect and right. like the control aspect. And um, it's one of those things where it's like, it's the same ordinance with financial advisors. People want someone that they can look at and trust and you know, feel like they're making the best decision holistically for them and not just a machine that's generating the best probability of outcomes, um, but a person that's also working alongside that same machine. Um, so definitely something that can be such a benefit to financial advisors. And it's something that if we get on board with it and like allow it to be something that really does benefit our productivity, then it just makes us a better firm um, instead of it being the drawback of our profession. Right. Well, it's just like, uh, you know, ETFs back in 2004, they're, you know, firms have to be able to adapt um, this into their practice or else they're going to be extinct at some point. So but that's not what today's podcast is about. Uh, let's focus on a million dollar routine. So this kind of came up uh, in internal conversations as we go through about podcast and what we should be um, talking about. And, you know, one of the things that we see really nervous people do is they're checking um, their, their portfolios every single morning. Yes. Like I know people here that tell me, they tell me this, <laughs> they drink their coffee and then they w look at their portfolio. And um, I think that's crazy. I mean, <laughs> I look at portfolios almost every morning. That's my yes. job. Yes. <laughs> right. <laughs> um, so I asked you to do some investigative reporting here. Yes. And say, well, we can't tell people, hey, don't do that and not tell them to replace it with something. Exactly. So what's a what's a million dollar routine? What are what are some of the most productive, successful, financially successful people doing every single morning? Well, really, they're not in 
putting in negative thoughts into their first morning. They're not giving that away um, to anything else. They're taking charge of their own emotions and their own um, forefront for the day overall. So really what they're doing is they're waking up. They're not looking at their phone. They're not looking at the news yet. They're waking up. They're starting their day, whether that be exercising or you know, that be reading a book or having a moment with meditation in their quiet time, whatever that may be, they're taking time and they're being selfish in that time of not letting and giving that away to anyone else. And so it's really something that they're focusing on themselves and really um, wanting to show that build up their day um, for whatever that might bring and making sure that they're first feeding themselves and filling up their own cup before they can ever, you know, give to anyone else. And so that's something that's super important of what you put into your body in the first, you know, hour of your day is really going to dictate your productivity for the rest of the day. So if you're reading a bad news headline or you're looking at your portfolio and it's down and then that, you know, makes you down for the rest of the day, like your productivity is shot. Um, or if it's even your portfolio is down and you're like, oh my gosh, I'm about to work another 10 years, you know, because <laughs> right. we all go into this spiral of thinking. Um, it's something that we really have to be careful of what we're putting into our body and what we're allowing to um, be the like stronghold at the beginning of our mornings. Garbage in, garbage out. Exactly. So when you say be selfish, I hear, you know, only f- focus on you. That's your time in the morning. Yes. So give me some examples. So really it's like Jeff Bezos, um, one of, you know, the most successful people we have. Yes. <laughs> um, so he is extremely successful in what he does, but the morning is strictly set aside for himself and for his family. And so it's something he wakes up, of course, before his kids and make sure that he's getting in his walk or run for the day that he's able to like set aside time to really sit through and figure out what his priorities are for the day. And then um, with that, once his kids are awake, he's taking that time to then make them breakfast and spend time with them. Um, And that really jumpstarts his day so that he's ready to walk into Amazon and be a productive boss for them. And knowing that he has already, you know, set his foundation for what that day is going to hold in the morning instead of letting his workspace be his foundation Um, at the beginning of the day or anything else. So I think it's really being grounded in whatever brings you joy, whatever brings you like contentment and peace in the morning. So then you can go off and be a better version and the best version of yourself for everyone else around you. So it's being selfish because so much and so oftentimes successful people, um, we have all have this thought process that we have to constantly be giving to others and like other people are before everything else, our business is before everything else, those kinds of things. And it's so easy to get lost in that. And so it's taking that time, even if it's the first 30 minutes of your morning, but dictating that for yourself to say, no, this is going to be my time. This is going to be time I invest in myself. And um, even Warren Buffett, he's a huge, you know, really person that loves to read. And so it's like, read a book every day or, you know, like at least get, two, 300 pages in is what he says, um, right. which I don't know about <laughs> that's that. Crazy. That's a lot, right. <laughs> but making sure that you're really just feeding yourself um, and investing in yourself because that's how you're going to continually be a better version of yourself as well. So what's your next step? What do you mean? Well, be consistent. Oh, you mean next step. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, what's my next I'm just step? I don't the list. know. <laughs> um, but yes, definitely being consistent is the next thing. Um, you have to be prepared um, and disciplined in that. And so it's something that, you know, we can all have those. And I'm guilty of this, of having like a good week long streak of waking up at 5 a.m., getting in the gym, making breakfast, reading the book, whatever that may be um, in the morning, doing, you know, a gratitude journal, all of those things. And then something happens in the weekend or something happens in the middle of the week and it throws off my sleep schedule and we're back to square one because I want to sleep in that day. Um, I don't want to wake up at five or whatever that may be. And then 
you're back to trying to build that habit again. And so it's something that if you're consistent with it and you're going to bed every night at the same time and trying to wake up at the same time every morning, um, a lot of times we are like newborn babies in a lot of ways. And so it is something that we're able to, you know, feed off of routine and our bodies crave routine, especially a good sleep cycle. And that helps you be so much more productive it alleviates stress, you know, it reduces anxiety and depression if you're getting a good night's sleep. And that's just going to really help your core center of who you are um, if you're able to be setting aside that routine for yourself and being disciplined in that, which it is so difficult to do. Um, but Oprah has done it. So she wakes up without an alarm clock at the same time every morning. So that's pretty impressive. <laughs> that is impressive. I mean, I. I get on these uh, workout kicks and I go maybe, I think the most I've ever gone, it's probably two weeks. <laughs> yeah. Right? And then, you know, other times it, for me, I find between like six and 9 a.m. is really my only time to get work done because I'm in meetings mm-hmm. the rest of the day, usually wall to wall meetings. Exactly. Followed by kid activities that don't get me home till 9 p.m. Mm-hmm. sometimes, right? Yeah. So it's really hard to, uh, to create that create that routine it, you know even for me I, I i struggle with well i feel so much better if i get 45 minutes on the elliptical i don't mm-hmm. i'm not like pumping iron <laughs> or anything but just 45 minutes on the elliptical makes me feel so much better and i can get through mm-hmm. the day better yes but it's, it's just hard to get there because then i go oh man i've got these four things exactly. i have to get knocked out today and if i don't do it before 9 a.m it's probably not going to get done and mm-hmm. um but yeah it's hard it's hard putting yourself putting it is. yourself first It is. It's one of those things where it's, you have to really set those boundaries of your timeline um, and letting other people know. Like um, my mom always had a green wing back chair that she sat in. And if she was sitting in the green wing back chair, then that meant that is mom's time. Oh, jeez. <laughs> Don't go to the green wing back chair. And she'll admit that. Um, but it was one of those things where it's like, nope, that's mom having her time. I'm going to go was, find dad. <laughs> was, was that something that she verbally said? Or you just got grumpy answers to know that don't approach mom in the green wing back chair? No, it was like a told thing. It was like, a, oh, hey, okay, this is the rule. Because at that time, my mom was studying for a few like exams and certificates that she needed. And okay. it was one of those things where it's like, if she's in that chair, <laughs> you need to go find dad. Or you need to go figure out it by yourself. I think the person <laughs> that I know in my life that is good with consistency is Tiffany here in our office. Oh, 100%. I mean. Superwoman. Mom of of three kids. Mm-hmm. She's a golf widow. I, I think her husband plays golf. <laughs> it seems like every day of the week. Or he's on a <laughs> golf trip somewhere. He's just, he's just like non-existent. And, and yet she gets up at 3.30 every single morning. Oh, I know. It's goes insane. to burn. Mm-hmm. Gets her butt kicked doing this. Is it called burn? Uh, is, that, is it burn or is it burn boot camp? Burn, yeah, something boot like camp. that. Yeah, yeah, burn boot camp. She goes to a boot camp with others, which I guess <laughs> is part of the key success is yes. you want to sign that wall, right? Yeah. And so they they almost shame you into <laughs> showing up every morning. Uh, and she does this religiously seven days a week. And she's been doing it for months now. I mean, this isn't yes. like a let's try something. And then inside the burn boot camp, then they have all these like other challenges like she just finished like a no sugar thing for was it three oh, weeks really? or something like oh, that i didn't know that one yeah that's how she could eat a uh, birthday cake yesterday oh. it was like her second day of having sugar <laughs> <laughs> that's hilarious but she this is what she wants to do and 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 she's really challenged herself with it and i tried to get her to come onto the podcast with us but she she won't do it she won't do a podcast no when um Megan and I tried to get into the five o'clock club or 5 a.m. club um, and Hadley. (laughs) It was really funny because we would talk to Tiffany for her advice. And she was like, you just have to do it. She's like, it sucks for the first two weeks of getting up that early. She's like, but once you do it, like then it's like ingrained in you and you're ready. Yeah. You guys don't have kids. One of you doesn't have a husband. So (laughs) what's your excuse? (laughs) It's the dogs. It's the dogs. (laughs) All right. So, um, yeah. So I like that. Um, the next, next step is choosing positivity. Yes. So I think this goes back to really just being careful with what you're putting in to your body first thing in the morning. And it really is, you should be choosing not to look at your phone first thing in the morning. Um, and that's so hard. I'm so guilty of that. And it's one of those things where it actually puts you into a spiral. There've been research studies done on it that if you actually put up your phone and start scrolling 
first thing in the morning, you are going to have a lesser productive day. I don't think that's correct grammar, but Hmm. um, not as productive day because your body's in this like cycle of just like not scrolling or what, what. I don't know exactly the full trajectory of it all, but it has been proven that, you know, if you're just scrolling on your phone or if you're, you know, on Facebook, whatever it may be, then you're kind of giving yourself garbage in the morning yeah. and that's not going to allow you to like really be productive that day. It actually leads you to have like less ability to focus and concentrate because you're not focusing on something in the morning because it's that, you know, TikTok 10 second gratification video or whatever it may be. And so it's not something that you're able to really have a great stability in moving forward in the day. But I'm um, definitely just making sure that you're waking up and then choosing to do something that is going to be a positive outlet for you. So it's whether that's working out for a lot of people, that's what it is. It's getting moving. It's making your body, you know, get your blood pumping. Um, Or if that's doing a gratitude journal, sitting in meditation, whatever that may be, it's so important to like choose to do that um, opposed to really sitting and, you know, letting your mood and your experience for the day be dictated by an outside source. Right. Um, that's something that we have to take charge of ourselves. And that's just having a lot of discipline to do that. So we talk about uh, getting moving. Um, I, I assume that, you know, that's exercise, right? Yes. Um, I found that I feel better when, when I have that drive to, exactly. to exercise. For mm-hmm. me, I don't exercise in the house. I have to get up and travel yeah. to exercise. But I can make that part of my routine too. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, for, for, for us, or at least for me, you know, I'm, I kind of run an eight to eight day, 8 a.m. Yes. to 8 p.m. And it, um, uh, when you get up and exercise, you can do other things. You can listen to a podcast. Mm-hmm. Exactly. Um, which I yes. have a long list of podcasts. I, I get sad because <laughs> if I, if I work out a whole week, then the podcast run out by Wednesday, you know, cause they've all. <laughs> So you have to, you have to find something else. Yeah. Let Spotify give you some recommendations. Yeah. Or audio books or too, if you have a list of things you want to, you're trying to read. Um, but, but yeah, I, you know, even, even if it's just going for a walk, I mean, driving out of the neighborhood in the mornings, you you always see people walking the hood. So that, that's something that, um, that, that that could be, that could be good too. And you do sleep better if you're exercising in the day, Mm -hmm. you do sleep better at night. No, you do. It really does provide so many benefits because yeah. you're able to get whatever stress you may have out. So people are less stressed when they're working out regularly. They don't have as much anxiety or depression. They're able to focus more if they're working out more because um, you're really just giving yourself that energy outlet. Um, right. But you're also, I think it's like dopamine is what's released um, after you've worked out. And so it's one of those things where it's, People can say you can actually get addicted to working Ring out. out. Um, Never happened. But yeah, yeah, I know. I don't know. <laughs> I'm like, wow, that's I like great. Don't, don't have that <laughs> I addiction. need that one. <laughs> right. Um, but anyways, it's supposed to be like and is one of the greatest things as far as, you know, giving you both an outlet to relieve stress, but then also an outlet to feel accomplished and to feel like you've already done something productive with your day. It kind of goes back to that same mantra of if you've made your bed in the morning oh, and you've yeah. accomplished one thing. Right. And it's like you can feel accomplished, then you can move on to the next thing. Yeah. So it's just like having that clean I've, moment or whatever it I may have be. A teenager in my house right now that has a hard <laughs> time making up his bed. And, you know, uh, I've talked about him on, I guess, the podcast before, but Ethan, my oldest, he's headed to Mississippi State. He's our big golfer, uh, mm-hmm. D1 golfer now. And, um, he's intended there in 24, 2024. So we got a little ways to go mm-hmm. yet, but he's, he's been struggling through, through some things, uh, golf wise yeah. and, um, it'll come back. It, it's, it we're, always does. He's kind of in the yeah. same position last year and he, he threw down some really low 60 numbers in some big tournaments, oh, and, yeah. uh, last year. So, but yeah, um, I tell him, I said, your golf game's not getting better until you make up your bed. <laughs> <laughs> and he was just like mind blown. I'm like, yeah. seriously, if you can't make up your bed every morning, then mm-hmm. how are you going to stand there and do your 50 short putts, your, you know, yes. 25 mid putts, your 15 long putts? How, do you, how are you going to do all those routines if you can't start with the simplest routine, which is sheet over mattress? Yes, yes. <laughs> right? It's the discipline to do it all because it's not fun <laughs> activities, especially, you know, sitting there doing right. reps. Right. Can it's like Karate Kid, wax but, on, wax off. Yes, yes. <laughs> um, but yeah, that, it, it's, um, but yeah, the, so setting priorities, let's talk, let's talk about that. Um, it's just like any, 
you know, business person here listening would know you don't go into a meeting with anyone in the business world without knowing, okay, what are my, what are my priorities? Like, what am I trying to get out of this meeting? What, what's the one thing I need to have or have sold or mm-hmm. have <laughs> discussed exactly prior to, you know, to this meeting ending. Mm-hmm. Otherwise we just be having a bunch of mindless meetings. Right. Yes. And so it is, you know, morning routines should be able to set your day priority. I talk about this with our, with a lot of our business clients is you set like your 10 year goal, your five year goal, your three year goal, then your one year goal. And then you set uh, inside that one year goal are all the rocks you have to move exactly. in order to achieve that next level. Right. Yes. So you always should be setting goals for yourself and going, what's preventing me from reaching that goal. Mm-hmm. And it could be um, in retirement. It could be something as simple as time with grandkids or time with spouse or your things that you've been always, always meaning to get yes. to, but you just, <laughs> there are always other things in the way. Yes. Right. Um, so what are those rocks you have to move? And I think the morning time is a great time to, to think about that. Just I have a short drive to work. Mm-hmm. I drive a total of three miles. And, but in those yeah. three miles, that's typically when, I, when I'm kind of glancing down at my phone going, this is my day. Okay, what are we trying to accomplish mm-hmm. um, today? And what do I need to go home having had completed? Yes, exactly. Right. And especially our Mondays. Mondays are big yes. for writing down all the things I didn't do the prior week. <laughs> I have to move out of the way so I can get to this week. Yes, yes. It's having that vision in front of you at all times and making sure that you're doing the right steps because you can have this great big vision. But it's one yeah. of those things I think almost everyone can think of a dream goal that they have in mind. Yep. But it's doing the little steps in between to actually achieve that goal that are the hard part. And so it's that journey to the end goal that Absolutely. is My- the difficult my daughter wants to ride as an equestrian in eventing discipline in the Olympics. That's her mm-hmm. goal. She wants to do that. I don't know if she's going to get there. <laughs> it's all on her. And there's very little yeah. to do with me other than, I guess, the paycheck. Right? Yeah, yeah, that's fair. <laughs> but, but, but what I'm trying to explain to her, you know, she she sees all these fancy, she really wants these this horse trailer that has living quarters. It's an RV for horses, yeah. right? Mm-hmm. And I keep trying to tell her, that's not how you achieve goals. Like you achieve goal by taking that money you would have spent on that take your nice little two horse trailer and you find the right horse that's going to take you all the way to the Olympics. Exactly. That's how you mm-hmm. achieve goals, right? No, definitely. And so that, that's, um, you have to eliminate the noise. Exactly. And flashy and, objects sometimes yes. can be noise, right? Yes, exactly. <laughs> and just, you know, what the expectation is of the world of like, oh my gosh, having the living quarters would make me look like such a real writer, <laughs> you know, but it's really, you know, that's not necessarily what? the truth. It's no, get the great horse Yeah, that's actually going to take you to be that great writer that's exactly. written about years from now come, from uh, the Olympics. Come, come as the person that uh, no one's expecting anything from because, mm-hmm. it, you know, Exactly. And, and, and surprise everybody. Absolutely. So what's interesting is none of these routines you've mentioned wake up and read. Well, some people read, I guess. Yes. Um, but in a world today, like last night, I made the mistake of going, okay, I've got a few extra minutes here mm-hmm. and I'm going to turn on the TV. I don't turn <laughs> on the TV much. Yeah. The TV is really never on. Mm-hmm. Um, if it's on, there's a small child watching YouTube channels, which drives me insane, <laughs> um, but, which is a whole industry. Like anyway, we could have a whole podcast episode <laughs> on the craziness on YouTube, but the, um, you know, I turned it on TV last night. We have, um, uh, I'm, I'm scanning the channels and we use YouTube TV. We mm-hmm. don't have the cable. Same. So I have, yeah limited channels with exactly. 60 something channels. I, I might so. be more than that 60, now. Yeah. Might be more than that now. But I, I land on Fox news and oh my gosh, this whole thing about the whole Trump collusion thing. Uh, the report came oh, out yes. right last night mm-hmm. and it, it basically, it was all false. Yes. Like it was set by the Hillary Clinton campaign. The FBI picked it up and ran with it mm-hmm. uh, to basically try to eliminate a presidential candidate, then eventually impeachment, which had nothing, there was no basis for it. Exactly. And, Mm -hmm. and, and you sit there and you watch that and you're like, and so I flip over to CNN. I'm like, where do they, of course, CNN's take was very different. CNN's Mm -hmm. take was, oh, this report was a complete waste of time and money. (laughs) (laughs) Thinking, well, according to Fox, it was impeachment. (laughs) 
oh. <laughs> but but I laugh about all that. But then at the same time, I'm looking down at my phone and mm-hmm. and I I click on a link. Um, and it was a research report that had come out about Medicare and Social Security. Oh gosh. And basically <laughs> over the next 20 years, mm-hmm. over the next 20 years, um, there's a pretty good chance that that uh, without a correction, which mm-hmm. I believe there will be a correction at some point um, in, in our fiscal policy. Yes. Um, there's, there's, we don't have enough money to pay for old people. The silver boom, mm-hmm. as they call it, we don't have enough money to cover these things. Right. Very true. Right now. Right now. In, in yes. today's, in today's world. Now, if you listen to some people, there, there are ways to get out of it that don't include 70% tax rate, which is what we'd have to do at this current moment in the next 20 years is get a 70% tax rate yeah. in order to pay for it. But so I'm watching TV going, Oh, that's interesting. Oh. And then on top of that, the podcast I listened to earlier was uh, Robert Kennedy jr. Who's running for president. Oh, yeah. Right. Mm-hmm. And he's talking about, he believes that the CIA killed his dad or killed his, um, uh, killed his uncle. Oh my. Right. Yeah. So then, so I watched that and then I watch, uh, uh, the news channels, not just one, but multiple news channels mm-hmm. about uh, basically we drug our country through three years of just complete chaos mm-hmm. for really no no reason. Yeah. Just one person's vendetta. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, very powerful person. Exactly. And then we, uh, I read about the fiscal state of the, that's pretty negative. That is. And I say all that. Very say, this is very, is very <laughs> ne- I went to bed last night going, oh my gosh, what are we going to do? We have all I'm these. I'm shocked you'd fall asleep. We I have feel all like these, my brain would be no, racing. No, it was racing. I was like, man, I got to get with Brad in the morning. We got to <laughs> we gotta come up with formulate a, 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 a portfolio plan for Arm- uh, financial Armageddon. And <laughs> I mean, it, it was just running through my head like a million miles mm-hmm. an hour. Imagine starting my day like that to this morning. I mean, this morning I was still thinking about mm-hmm. it a little bit, but, but that's not how you want to start your day with something. Something that's encouraging and positive that you can conquer the world with. And there's always going to be news like that. Because remember, all that stuff sells. All that stuff is very Mm -hmm. negative and it causes people um, to, to, you know, to listen in. Yes. Right? No, it does. They're trying to get that hook line that's going to capture you to get their clicks or to get you to pause on their channel, whatever it may be. So it definitely is something that everyone's off of the clickbait, as they call it. So that's a case for staying staying off of scrolling on your phone. Exactly. At mm-hmm. least in my feed, that's kind of stuff that pops up. Yes. No. You like so. you either have to specifically curate a feed that is like positivity only, which you just can't do, um, or um, really just avoid it until you're out of space where you feel like you can actually enjoy it, but not feel like it's gonna bring you down. And there's sometimes where it's just needed to detox from it all. Um, yeah, which is so needed at different points. So just to, you know, delete it all off your phone and just restart, but that could be a whole nother podcast. <laughs> yeah. There's actually, um, there's actually a couple of news sources that, uh, show up in your email now. Mm-hmm. Um, and I will have to look for those. Maybe that I'll, I'll bring that up on another podcast, but, uh, I have one, uh, that I'm trying to find it right now really quick. Is it like the um, daily good yeah, or something? It, it, well, no, that it's the fourteen forty daily digest. Okay. Um, Hadley can throw that in the uh, in the show notes, but this is this is more like Walter Cronkite <laughs> type reporting. <laughs> Do you know who that is? I don't. <laughs> that's a real. That's an older news guy that was not biased like the current news guys, uh, or if he was, he didn't show it. Um, so that, that was before my time too, by the okay, way. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yeah, fourteen forty, and they have a like a headline sponsor each um, each email, but it comes out every morning, uh, usually around five o'clock in the morning. I think is when I get mine, and it'll it'll basically uh, hit all the highlights around the world uh, just in text format. You can click for more information if you, if you want to dive into something. Uh, and it's free. Um, but it's called the Daily Digest, uh, 1440 Daily Digest. So that's a great way to uh, get news outside of um, what appears to be Definitely. very biased uh, mainstream news these days. Yes. All right, Michaela, it's always good talking to you. Um, thanks uh, for everyone for listening to today's episode. If you're interested in learning more about Wise Wealth Management or want to schedule a consultation, meet with one of our fiduciary advisors, you can do so by going to wiserinvestor.com. 
or you can click uh, the link in our episode notes. Uh, might want to mention, uh, if you go back into our podcast, look for Financial Success, Success is Intentional. That's a great one to listen to. Uh, we also have a YouTube channel called A Wiser Retirement, where we talk about uh, six habits of financially success, successful people. Uh, that will be linked in the show notes as well. And we'll see you next time. Sounds great. Thanks for listening to A Wiser Retirement Podcast. We hope you enjoyed today's episode. Make sure to subscribe wherever you're listening. That way you don't miss any new episodes. We'd also appreciate if you could leave a rating and review. If you have any questions about anything that was discussed today, head to wiserinvestor.com and reach out. This episode was produced and edited by Ken Hoadley.